I thank you for this honor, really, of being invited here to Hanford. I thought I was coming to Portland, and then I realized that the Portland, the Occupy Portlanders had organized this all the way where Hanford really is. I didn't know it because I come from the east, more recently from Nevada test site, Nevada desert experience. So I'm really coming to bring lots and lots of honor and, and um, wishes, greetings from several places. That's my purpose in coming. From the Nevada desert experience, from the Nevada test site, which for <coughs> nearly 60 years now <coughs> has been uh, detonating 1,000 atom bombs on the sacred lands of the Western Shoshone people. I'm sure many of you know the story of that and you have followed it closely and many have been there. How many have actually been to the test site here? Yep. Gotcha, gotcha, right. We've had thousands there. And uh, I guess it's my only ticket to being uh, eligible to be here because I did have had the last only seven years living there. I was living and working in West Africa before that, but I knew about Hanford and we followed closely the tragic stories of the, your dramatically gorgeous Columbia River with its living resources so damaged and polluted and diseased as the land and the life uh, in that Nevada desert test site, which is the size of the state of Rhode Island. I also came today because I happen to be privileged to be in New York City on the 12th of March, or the 11th of March, excuse me, the actual day when we commemorated the Fukushima explosion, or disaster, and I have, uh, I listened to young, probably in their early 20s, 14 Japanese men and women who had come over to be there in New York City in the USA, which probably was the source of many of their nuclear reactors. And those young women, I think, said something that you will all appreciate hearing. And I'm just going to read their words because I was so moved by what they were saying in perfect English there in Union Square Park on the 11th of March this year. And I think we can honor them and all the people in Fukushima for the amount of work that they've been able to do in this one year. Hasn't it been eliminating or closing down more than 50 nuclear power stations with only one left to go in one year? I think that's the, those are the facts. We have a lot to learn from the energy and the experience of the Japanese. This is what they said. Uh, they said four pages of this. There were about four of them taking, or six of them, giving these messages. And I'm just going to give you two of them, very brief. Uh, let, this is what one said. Let me tell you what happened in Japan. At their power companies get up to 13 billion in subsidies from the government to build a nuclear power plant. Once the location is chosen, the power company showers the locals with money. They take the guys to hostess bars and the old people to hot springs. Uh, <clears throat> wine and dine, wine and dine. And they lie to them about the nuclear plant being good for the local economy. Have you ever heard that before? Yeah. They actually have a manual on how to use the money to divide the community into supporters and opponents. Fishermen even sell off their fishing rights for enormous sums. And there's a PR barrage. Sound familiar? 
that nothing but propaganda about safety measures and secret dangerous experiments. Where does the money for all that come from? You know, from everyone's taxes. This is how Japan has aggressively constructed 59 nuclear power plants, either operating, decommissioned, or planned. And finally, they said, this means that our families and friends are now living with over 50 time bombs strapped to their bodies. Even if one blows up, the entire area around it becomes uninhabitable for all living things. And Japan built these reactors under the banner of peacefully using nuclear power. But the real reason is that the government wants nuclear weapons. Does that sound familiar? And so I'm coming to ask for a future action from Portland, Occupy Portland, and from all the Occupies around this country. An idea has sprung up in these past two or three months that it's based on the fact that we never hear mentioned the United States arsenal of nuclear weapons when we try to launch a war into Iraq, Iran because they may have one in the future. And so we thought if we could, uh, if the Occupy people from all over this country, as well as in Europe, because there are many, and even in Moscow, we have a connection there, would give a day just to bring out the information about the United States nuclear weapons arsenal, which is never even mentioned, is it? <laughs> so if we could do that, and not only do that on this certain day, simultaneously around the country, also expose this horrendous plan to modernize and to expand and to proliferate nuclear weapons to the cost of what could be well over, in the, if it ever gets uh, implemented, well over a trillion dollars. They talk about, you know, 650 billion, but it, will all, it, could, it would be far more than that. To expand Los Alamos, to expand Kansas City nuclear facility, and to expand Oak Ridge nuclear facility the production for the production of plutonium. So in other words, to make more nuclear weapons, not start disarming as we've been pledging, as the United States has pledged itself to do, of the administration that is, I guess. Uh, anyway, they pledged to do it in May of, 19, of 2000, um, 2010, didn't they? When the Russian latest start to agreements were being uh, held. And now here we are with this huge um, um, appropriation for expanding the nuclear weapons facilities. So if we could do that, we're hoping to spread the word around through your great network of communication and have a day, perhaps the 6th of August, the 7th of August, the 8th of August, or the 9th of August sometime around Hiroshima Nagasaki commemoration days and all come out together around this country in Europe and in Moscow with the same message. What do you think about it? Yeah. Okay, I bring that to you in, in, with, uh, in honor of in Washington State your two prisoners, no, only one prisoner left in Washington State for entering the uh, Bangor Naval Trident submarine base to expose the fact that in this state you have roughly one, 2,000 nuclear weapons stored. Isn't that true? Yeah. Above, before, uh, bigger or less. Anyway, in the range of 2,000 being not only storing them but constantly being 
modified, modernized, and made ready for use, which is, anyway, we don't have to say that to you. So Steve Kelly is still in uh, prison in SeaTac Federal Prison in solitary confinement for that wonderful action that the five of them performed on the on the uh, not for, second of November 2009 when they octogenarians and 60 year olds got right into the place in view of the uh, bunkers. So we honor and Steve honors you and blesses you from his solitary confinement in resistance to the illegality of that trial. And the illegality of the United States government for having continued in the nuclear business. And also Stu Susan Crane, who's down there in Dublin, California. They too said, both send their love to you and honor you for your presence here today. And we all know that nuclear energy is linked inextricably with nuclear weapons. Thank you for being here today and we honor you.